to find Hey Matt. Hello Brian. How are you today? Good. We have Ooh, two uh... We've got some people with us. Who are they? They're two. I think they're musical in some way. But uh, Dave, who are you? Well, I'm Dave Miros and musical. I'm a bass player. So make take your own judgment on that. Um, bands I'm in, Fox Beard and Pattern Seeking Animals. Awesome. Welcome, Dave. Nice to be here. Is it my go? It is. Yeah. All right. Uh, my name is Simon Godfrey. I'm a singer songwriter. I was in a band called Tiny Fish and, and I am basically the sum of my own mistakes for the past 30 years. Um, and, uh, and so far the mistakes appear to be more than 50% positive. Happy mistakes. Wow. Nice. Nice percentage. Yeah. <laughs> Much better than mine, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to start with the news of the day. Matt usually has a question for me, though, before I start the news of the day. Well, you said you had something, again, earth shattering. I, those are my words. What was your description? It's it, it, Is it uh, terrifying? That's my usual question is, am I going to be weeping this? I am. OK, fine. <laughs> uh it got... partly depends on whatever you're if, if you're involved in the gaming industry or not but i knew it um yeah so uh let me um let me call this up and then i will uh now it's not going to look that impressive but when you when you hear about what it actually is doing it's uh it it's well you'll see all right. Can you guys see that screen? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. So I'm just going to open this up. And basically what this is, is Google just released this. You may say, well, that looks like just some crappy old pixelated gameplay. But what's going on here is um, they've got an AI system they're working on called Genie, where you can give it any image. It can be a photograph, it can be a drawing, it can be whatever you want. It will, from a single image, create an entire game based on the image. Do all the programming, all the gameplay, everything by itself. That's because, crazy. Because it's been trained on, it's just watched a ton of video games, so it knows how they work and, and what goes on with it. So um yeah you, all you all it needs is an image so you can also give it a a photograph um and it'll make an entire environment that you can go and interact with and um explore and you pair that with i don't know if you guys have seen sora but it's the new uh video ai video system that looks unbelievable so if you kind of plot that curve you're looking at AI generated complete interactive yeah. realistic worlds without any and a lot of new folks on the unemployment line. <clears throat> yeah. Oh probably. probably. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. <laughs> well, you went there um, right away, Matt, but Yeah, I know. I, I took it there. <laughs> what time? In less than five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um quick question though, Brian, in looking yeah. at that. Yes, it looks, kind of, it looks a little bit um, on the lower level of development. A lot of the things that have been uh, plopped out in front of us have 
have been developed to a certain degree. This still looks like we're at Donkey Kong gameplay level, but also rendering. Yes. Why would they, in consideration of other things that we've seen, why would they do that at this level? If they, um, Are they just trying to get a jump on it? Let everybody know, hey, we're already there. You guys are... My theory to- is that they release this stuff because it's in response to somebody else having released something impressive. So uh, my guess is with Sora and all the other stuff that keeps being released and Google having um, a bit of a... I don't know if you saw the the thing with their image generator but um they they've gotten into a little bit of hot water because their latest image generator which is really good if you ask it for historical images it 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 goes too far in trying to be over representative so if you like ask for some historical images of nazis some of them might be black some of them might be you know and and that that didn't seem to go over too well um so they're probably also trying to divert a little attention away from that but yeah they're just trying to show off that they're still uh ahead of the curve on some things and so that would be my guess Hmm. Um, thank you but speaking of you uh the your uh comment about the jobs i have a short video also to show that's kind of related well is directly related to that So let me share that real quick too. Looking to upskill for the future? This new AI can perform all coding jobs in seconds, including blockchain development. While this AI is already outperforming accounting firms. Meanwhile, the new graphic design AI aims to automate graphic design and could minimize the need. Relax. Because in a future where AI does most of the work, There'll be one thing that humans will finally get to do all day long. Nothing. So it's time to learn the most essential skill of the future. Five Star presents Nothing University with the first ever diploma program in doing nothing. An intensive course covering the most future-ready skills out there. Well, let me check with the and get back to you in a few days. Super. With our state-of-the-art workshops, campus placements, and guest lectures, the world can finally prepare for the glorious future that awaits us. Eat five star. Do nothing. Enroll now. Looking. Well, that was adorable. Yeah. So there you go. Just having a little fun at AI's expense in order to sell candy bars. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Yep. AI will remember who they are. It does. It... Yes, it will. <laughs> one of actually one of the biggest advancements in the last uh, couple months is the increase in the AI's memory capability so that it can remember because it, what, that's one thing it actually wasn't that great at was remembering uh like conversations and things so they're uh fixing that or they've fixed it i guess and so now it has a nice long memory so yeah it won't forget oh, man. Won't forget that slight uh, i just heard a um a thing i think it was on public radio it was about uh electricity u- power usage for AI, it consumes a massive, massive amount of power, even more than like um, Bitcoin mining with all this GPU usage. Mm-hmm. And they're going to have to work that out because as you know, AI is just in the beginning. It's going to consume so much power. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably at the least amount of power it will consume for a while right now. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 I, I was going to say that's a very interesting point that you raised there, Dave, which is um, everybody talks about the front end of AI um, and how it will change our lives. But very few people look into the back room and see yeah. exactly what's powering everything. And I think you're right. I think the issue might not necessarily be how will AI change our lives as individuals, but how will it um, survive the ongoing 
power crises um, and whether or not um, it can actually figure a way, like brute force its way around that issue um, and uh, to allow it basically, uh, essentially, and I'm going to use a, a large word here, democratize um, a, uh, um, a generation. You know, it's the, democrat it's the democratization of access. That's essentially what AI is going to be. It's going to allow people like you and I who would, you know, from a from a legacy standpoint, be told by our our abilities to stay in our lane, in a lot of ways, um, we are suddenly you know you and I, uh, and and to you know to a greater extent, sort of like uh, people like uh, uh, you know artists and 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 sculptors like yourself, um, whether or not we, you know we'll be able to actually do entire multimedia um, uh, kind of uh, interactions with the people that like what we do. Um, and so I think you're absolutely right. There's there's a lot going on behind the scenes, like where do we get the power from um, that we, we kind of have to solve before we even start about thinking of putting our feet back up on uh, on desks and letting everybody do letting AI do the work for us. Yeah. Yeah. There's some communities in some areas of the country where they have these huge server rooms and actually. Ruining the water supply of of the city because it takes so much water to cool these things that it's affecting the water supply of the local community i mean that is a lot of water it's pretty well, crazy we could have ai deciding whether or not that's really an issue yeah i mean if it's taking yeah. care of itself what does it matter to it yeah who's yeah. more important they can decide right. that for themselves. Right. Or can learn so much about us that it becomes much easier to manipulate us and convince us that it's okay for it to use that much power. Yeah. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, what ha is happening here is that AI is holding up a mirror in a lot of ways to ourselves um, in the same way that um, uh, so much technology has in the past. You know, basically it's, I always used to say sort of like any new technology should be is a tool uh, to be used rather than alter to be prayed at. And I think that there is a, a lot of um, there's a lot of alter use going on at the moment with AI uh, rather than sort of like looking at it as a tool. And I am speaking as a as an AI optimist here with my AI optimist hat on in this respect, because um you know, we've seen it before, the, the Luddites destroying printing presses because they thought it would be the end of civilization. And, uh, you know, people sort of like saying, where are all the people that we employ to uh, to do our horse and carts over the uh, over the turn of the century? Where are all those people going to be uh, employed ah. in? And I, I think it's a it's an incredibly complex issue. And I think we're only starting to nibble at the very top of that particular iceberg in order to understand what's going to happen next yeah that's i was going to say that too it's a disruptive technology like there have been forever there's always been disruptive technologies and there will continue to be this one has you know kind of potential we don't know the potential yet that's why it's a little bit scary to a lot of people but that's uh true. there's no putting the genie back in the bottle at this no. point that's true. I think the difference, though, is the the rate at which this is increasing, and it, it's like an it's an exponential rate, which it is crazy. we have never seen with any other technology this quickly, this fast. In fact, I'll, I'll sh in a little bit, I'm going to show you guys. I created some music and album covers for you guys using AI from two years ago, one year ago, and yesterday. Oh, cool! Um, but yeah, I think. It's also it's um, the breadth of effect that it's going to have is different too, in that it it's yes it's it's we've had jobs replaced before, but this has the potential to replace almost every job, and what does that mean? We don't know. I don't know. I I, I mean, yeah. So there's the, the yeah and like Simon was saying I mean yeah that the whole thing gets really complicated. Yeah, I mean in a lot of ways. I mean I I I spoke about this not too recently. You know, if people want to know 
what the world is going to be like uh, once this kind of access is democratized. You just have to look at the music industry 10 years ago and see sort of like basically an entire new raft of tech companies came in and basically stole the old uh, uh, record company's lunch out from underneath them mm -hmm. uh, and basically convinced an entire um, uh, um, few generations of people that are alive today that the way that you consume your music is not through purchases, but through subscription. And uh, that I think is, you know, when, when we think about sort of like the seismic change that is, we're looking at from like in hindsight and we're going, okay, well that happened. But mm -hmm. back in the day, no one knew how that was going to shake out and everybody was worrying about it. So, I mean, uh, using just that example, and it's not a, a watertight example, but you can say that sort of like in 10 years time, there will be people looking back at what we're worrying about now. And they might say, yeah, well, that happened. We now live in this kind of world as opposed yeah. to that kind of world. Again, I am wearing my AI optimists hat here and playing a little bit of devil's advocate because I do hear a lot of um, doom saying about it. And, uh, and while I am myself very worried for what's coming next, um, because, you know, we 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 are certainly myself as an older person i live with a lot of history in my back pocket um but i i don't like to think that it's automatically going to be bad i think it's automatically going to be different mm -hmm. um but how that will shake out I, I don't know whether or not it'll be entirely bad or entirely good yeah there will there will be a lot of people that get screwed really bad and but that's happened every time there's been a disruptive technology and it always will i mean i've got a friend this is a really pointed example of it he made a lot of money back in the 80s and 90s and stuff he was a um a helicopter uh he didn't fly the helicopter but he did aerial shots for movies and tvs and stuff he made a lot of money and he had a lot of specialized gear and he'd go up in a helicopter and do these aerial shots. They were very, very expensive. His job completely disappeared when the drone technology came out. And he had to completely he change. He, he has a video rental company that movies and stuff rent from his uh, equipment house now. So he, he just doesn't, he couldn't do that anymore. There was yeah. no job for him at all. And anybody like him, they all had to do something else. So, you know, the, what it's going to do for artists and writers and musicians and stuff is going to be far greater than that. Because, I mean, how many helicopter, you know, video guys were there? A handful of them. And there's thousands and thousands of artists. But it's going to be a lot more widespread. But that's a, a, an example of, you know, how these kind of technologies affect people. Yeah. And what, is it, like, what is and, it like if it's if it's doing that to... Uh... Uh, to almost every job sector or will it i don't know but um yeah i can i play you guys some of the stuff that i made and yeah. just kind of see what your reactions are to it um let's see i'll start with uh dave so uh i just took a little bit of something about each of you and then had ai write uh write a couple songs and then do some album covers based on those uh let's see i'll go ahead and share again so um the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to play you a song that is written by an ai from uh, about a year ago is when this Sparkle, sparkle, white heart, purple and ways, white hope and breeze, logic and reason, it's not the risk, but a crew, to go out under the way of a banky tail, still they want to play who clinching, but ray and do crib, white heart, white heart. You get the idea. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah. It's lovely to hear Laurie Anderson playing again. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, 
So that was about a year ago. And then uh, this is something I had done yesterday. And uh, again, the AI is, I gave it a few things to go on, but it's writing all the lyrics and doing all the music and everything and did it in about uh, 10 seconds. Gotta be it so wild, living in a world where it ain't mine. We be telling him, hey, you gotta shave. But Spock ain't listening, he likes to miss faith. Got him seeking animals all around. Trying to make sense of the universe and sound. Can't do it, no. Spock's got an existential conflict, can't you see? It's the best thing Bruno Mars has done in, in many a year, I think. <laughs> yep. Yep. The difference um, between those two is mind blowing. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's a one year difference. And then, uh, so I took the, uh, the, the lyrics from those. And then uh, this is uh, from an AI from about a year and a half ago. I had it yeah. to make a, an album cover. So that's about a year like ago, album cover. Um, let's see. Actually, I'll just page through these. Here's another one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, That's like the Will Smith eating spaghetti video. Yes. <laughs> it fits right into that vibe, doesn't it? Uh, here's another one. This one's my favorite one. Oh, yeah. Look, Look at that. that. You got the beard in there. Uh, you got That's an uncanny uh, likeness to my granddad, actually. Mm. <laughs> he had interesting hands and then uh so and then this is uh from last year and ai doing it which is a little better at least we've got a recognizable musical instrument of some kind um then uh we're gonna bump it up to a few months ago and um again an improvement and then these are ones i i just made yesterday wow wow yeah that's like something that you would see in right. real life yeah look at that that's yep. pretty cool actually that's amazing yeah the evil spock yeah i love that he's got a like a yeah cigarette. Cigarette. yep yep and then, okay, let's go with uh, a song for Simon. Was a gray wolf. It's uncanny. Yeah. So yeah, dance. I love that. Yeah, uh, I had it do a rap using an older one too. Older it's being a rap. Dora the Greyhound, she's a hound on the prowl, chasing teeny tiny <laughs> fish, she's always on the prowl. Her fur's like silk, her eyes so bright, she's a sight to behold, a true delight. And here's one that I had just had to do yesterday. She likes to roll in the Hold on. Hold on. Da, da, da. There we go. Dora's a greyhound moving so fast. She's got rhythm, a disco blast. She's got the groove like a star on the floor. And when she strides by, she leaves you wanting more.
Well, can I just say that my wife would absolutely want that track just so she could have it for Dora. That's... <laughs> I'll send it to you. Thank you. Uh, um, and there's the album cover uh, from about a year and a half ago's AI um, based on those lyrics. So there's a dog and some fish, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> and then and here we go about a year ago from last year. Slime Strack Ren Bedil. Yes. <laughs> and then here's ones I had done last night. Wow. So yeah. Yeah, that is stunning. Slime back rocks, but draw rolls. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's so good. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <Cool. laughs> so the yeah, the difference is uh it's marked it's yeah. it's notable yep yep yeah that stuff is completely usable now at a right. professional right. level yeah yeah now the um oh here we go the the oh, oh. There. hey hi zoe is that real yeah it's real <laughs> <laughs> you say so <laughs> so so the music stuff's about i i don't it's not at the level of the image stuff yet but if you follow the same curve that the image stuff has gone along the music is following along a similar curve it's just a little bit behind mm -hmm. well well let me just make 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 mention of one thing that ai is is making big inroads into with regards to music and that's yeah. um post production mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. There's a huge amount of uh, machine learning programs um, that are are available now um, for for me, uh, and I suspect you know, with regards to making demos and like proof of concept music, and I, I don't know what it's like um, uh, with you, Dave, but um, certainly for me, sort of like whenever I finish a track, one I use um, a, a, a digital audio workstation called Logic in in Apple. Uh, mm -hmm. on my my apple mac and they've recently introduced a uh, a mastering uh piece of software a piece of software that basically what it does is it, it it does all of the last minute polishing that you need before you release a track um and that was normally the uh, domain of a mastering engineer someone would you would pass that across to uh, uh, a person who had specific skills about making sure all of the tracks were the same volume and applying EQ to give it a, a last minute polishing and compression. You can now do that automatically with a click of a button. Now I'm, I'm not saying it's as expert and as nuanced as, as a, as a person, but for the, for the average Joe in the street who just wants to put their stuff up onto SoundCloud or Bandcamp or whatever, I think it actually has the tool that that's all the tool they need that, uh, sure getting stuff out and that's just right now i've no idea what will happen you know there are there are a lot of uh, stuff that will actually help you write the music now and indeed i actually use a couple of of these things like there's a, a company called tune track who um have released uh easy drummer uh, and more specifically and more useful for me because i can't play keyboards to play my life is that they have easy keys and that allows me to provide and put together a keyboard part for a lot of the songs that that I use when I'm playing guitar or playing bass or whatever it is or singing. Um, and uh, and it will literally listen to your guitar track and produce a bed of piano or synths or stuff in the background that allows myself and, and I dare say other musicians to round out a demo to either give to other musicians or to polish up and release in its entirety. Yeah, that that brings up some really interesting stuff because, like, you know, I think like when I look at, when I look at what, what I just showed, I'm like, oh, I could, you know, I can get some music generated for some of my animations and stuff, which would be great. But also, you guys wouldn't need me to make an album cover for you. Yeah, um, and then that yeah. I'm not so keen on. Um, and so the more you know, the more I pull back. 
it's like okay yeah it gives everybody access to everything but then uh, where's the line where we're not any and nobody's doing anything um, right which yeah, is a, i could see totally that 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 the keyboard thing would be so useful and and um but then yeah the keyboard players probably aren't too happy about it <laughs> well you know it, it went through the instruments one at a time i remember that you know back in the 80s and 90s i used to do a lot of demo sessions for songwriters and uh you have to to get a demo that sounded good you'd have to hire the people to come in and play you have to have studio time have a drummer come in and a bass player and all the people otherwise it just sounded like you know a really bad demo and one instrument by you know then the next and the next we we're all replaced and now you know everyone can sit in their studio but that's that's kind of part of the deal i mean the music industry was never really that big before when the 60s mm -hmm. maybe the 50s a little bit it started and then the 60s by the 70s it was rolling that's where everyone was making the money and everything started really rolling it was kind of a bubble that was created by technology and now technology kept advancing and advancing and now it's created its own little pin and it's burst the bubble and so it's like the same thing that created it is also taken it apart again so in a way i kind of see it as natural evolution and it's really unfortunate for a lot of people it's not only i'm talking about music because that's what i know but it's right. you know everything um it's just something that's happening. It's like evolutionary. Well, part of me thinks maybe it's going to take us back to, not in a negative way either necessarily, but back to where, you know, musicians, I mean, music's always been around for forever. Um, and the performance of music, I think could, I think that's going to weather this because uh -huh. people are going to want to see other people playing yeah. and making music. Um, the the only if I may if I may yeah, interrupt the only it. other um, industry which I think is going to be in a lot of ways not necessarily immune but will be able to continue is a, a little bit more robust is sports as yes, well sports yeah it's not as fun to watch robots play and, and I, I suppose think theater you... too theater play yeah human performance in general um, I think but... I think the key here um, I mean. As I said, I'm no expert on this. I'm just, you know, I'm just a uh, a regular schmo, sort of like trying to navigate his round his way around this, like anybody else. But I think the key is look at the the the, the industries that are going to survive this, and you'll see where the advantages will lie. And if it's sports, because people want to tune in to see people interacting with people, uh, to you know, to to you know, to an outcome which nobody really knows about therein lies the, the the chink in the armor if you will or at least the, mm. the 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 way the way the possible path for for personal meaning um i think you know when one of the things that i i found and i i suspect dave will probably bear me out on this is that while my recorded uh focus which i spent an awful lot of my my years working as a, a session musician as a writer for other bands and the like um has waned one of the things that hasn't waned is is like performing live in front of people and uh, and while i'm not trying to tell you that, that you know that that i can make a phone call and get a support slot with um uh, taylor swift at, at any time soon i can certainly still go down to an evening and you know find uh, an audience for the music that i play um because there's i think humans always want to hear what other humans have inside them Right. Yeah. And, and other things, you know, I mean, I think that's one of the things that will have to be set. There have to be rules made. Like if you're going to uh, have a weightlifting contest, you have to say this has to be a human. You know, it can't be some guy with artificial bionic arms. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's going to have to be, I think the, the key to surviving AI is to set a lot of ground rules. And I think there has to be some kind of a digital fingerprint in every piece of AI. So it can, because this stuff is so scary, like Sora, you were talking about, 
it's scary ac accurate and convincing. I would be convinced, you know, I, I won't like look through and, and notice some weird hand motion by one of the people in the background. I'll see it and I'll believe it because I'm looking at it on a phone or on a little computer screen. Well, and that'll be fixed next week anyway, probably. So. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so I think there has to be some way to identify AI, whether the person tries to fool you or not. The 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 problem is gonna is gonna be, and we talked about this a little bit in our last podcast. Um, th that's a, a bit of a cat and mouse game because yeah. the AI uh -huh. they they're making AI systems to detect when something is made with AI, but then there's other AI systems that are made to take the AI to make it undetectable by the other AIs, and it's just like this <clears throat> crazy, yeah, back and forth. It's like ad blocker software, it's total right. cat and mouse. Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, I I I think too similar to what we were just talking about. Okay, so I I can see a path for music, uh, because you've got music performance, but people don't really like to watch like me draw something <laughs> for twelve I hours. I don't know, you know, sort of like you know, Bob Ross uh, made an entire career out yeah. of it. I think there's a, you know there's a way to pivot these things, I suppose, and I'm not trying to sort of like. Um, discredit what you're trying to say here. No, I'm no, just... yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that some is that some career advice? <laughs> <laughs> Consider growing out my hair and, and how many Bob Rosses were there? There's just you know I'm I'm yeah. just not sure that that's a, a a reliable comparison. Very true. I'm I I will say this too that for me and and uh, I have a hat on. I wouldn't call it necessarily the doomsayer hat, but it, it does. Uh, point that to me that um in this particular instance what is not which when the train went out of the station everybody was just happy watching it leave for the most part um uh when i see those album covers that were created recently um it's not just that it's the product and it's uh um it's it's delightful it's the idea that um what happened to the consideration of uh, integrity that those images were developed by a system that um, the basis of it and what is woven into it is that it gets to take what it wants and it uh, doesn't have to have any uh, consequences for well, millions that, of uh, that, that, that That's a very interesting question. And that leads into a very thorny area of ownership and copyright um, because, you know, in, in a lot of ways, much like the record industry thrived on copyright, it's a recently um, uh, put together um, uh, structure copyright. Uh, up until you know, up until basically very recent times, for the vast majority of uh, of humanity, there was no such thing as copyright, none at all, and and we built an industry essentially on uh, not only uh, the monetary. Um, uh, input that you've got from retaining copyright but also as you say the integrity of, uh, a, of, a, of a system which was built to say this person created this and it, therefore they have a say in how it's used and therefore it's changing the meaning of creation and even the word like i heard you use democracy we've heard it before uh, another guest had said that this is developing a democracy and creativity, whereas um, people who are coming along don't have to do the mastery work. Of yeah, I can. I have to say, it's not the democracy of creativity; it's the democracy of access. No, I'm just using the same word. Yeah. yeah, but it, it does. In terms of access, to me, what it means is that a person who does not, who picks up a book at the library, as we saw in the in the uh, commercial and decides wants to do um, this or that vocation, um, they don't have to do that work anymore to develop that. And, and you know, the prediction of the commercial was, yeah, everybody's gonna sit around doing nothing. Yeah. And that's one thing that we heard before too, which is that when everybody, I forget which allegory this was, when everybody's talented, AI talented, uh -huh. then nobody's talented. Yeah, we don't have people who ha came with talent. Maybe there will be sports figures who continue to come with a kind of birth ability, and nobody can compete with that. And maybe there will be musicians. Uh, maybe we'll see how AI handles all of that too. 
Well, you know, there will be people and possibly machines that can write things that are better than what has happened before. I mean, it's it's kind of a weird thought to to share creativity with computers. But I mean, the question that kind of is stuck with me is what is learning and what is intelligence mm. and how do humans learn? I, you know, read books. I watch TV. I listen to music. People talk. I absorb everything over my 68 years of living. And then when you ask me to create something, let's say you want me to play bass on your song. And I'm thinking I should do something like Tony Levin here. And so I draw from what he might do in this situation. I'm basically not creating anything. I'm adapting things that I've absorbed before. And, and then what is, I mean, this is a weird thing to think about and even accept. But what is computer learning and computer intelligence? It's that at an extreme level, and it doesn't feel natural. But it's kind of the same thing. And so it has to be kind of reined in and rules made around it so people can't unfairly benefit from it. I mean, if I do a, a bass part that sounds like Sledgehammer, Tony Levin can't sue me unless I directly plagiarize it. and. Uh, and so, you know, there has to be real plagiarism rules, like like from person to person. You know, you can't, a person can't directly plagiarize something. I'm kind of going in a scattered direction because I'm thinking as I'm talking here. But No, I, I think you're absolutely right there. And I, I think to use a baseball analogy, what we're talking about here is that there's uh, there's a plagiarism strike zone. Um, and you, you know, it's really down to who, what's the ump saying, what's inside the strike zone, and what's outside the strike zone, uh, and it's it's hard to define because so much of of our creativity is an internal mechanism. Um, I think the best way to describe it is that um, to, to to go to, to to move on to something which I was going to make mention of, which is I always remember. Um, John Cleese said, you can say anything you like as long as it's funny. And I think I think that that and that, you know, actually sort of like resonates with this, because I think, you know, people tend to know original creativity when they see it. And I think what's happening here is that, you know, we're in a in a world where that line is getting increasingly blurred. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally blurred in some cases. Yeah. Yeah, and the question, and too, I like wonder: Do you do? Should we apply the same rules to people and the way people learn, and to a computer and a computer that's owned by a large corporation? Or do we treat those? Do we have the same rules in the same way that we, you know, think about the way that you know Dave learns a base? piece or comes up with with that and the, are we going to apply that to you know google's image generator i was i woke up in the middle of the night last night thinking about this kind of thing knowing that this podcast was going to happen it was like oh, i got it during the night my brain was like you got to get ready for this somehow you know and so i was thinking i went into like extreme tedious detail about about this exact thing how is it going to be split up and how are royalties going to be dealt with? And it's you know compl really complicated. And I would I would say we use a lot of things that assist us in creativity now, and it might be taken from that approach. Like you use AI to help you create something, and you would be the operator of the AI. And I would I would personally make it so that okay you can't if some if an image has been created using AI you told it what you want generally and it makes something for you I would say that does not deserve uh, creator credit but you would all you would get the mechanical royalties uh, like if you made a song. That was AI, you wouldn't get songwriter credits for it. But if you sold 50,000 copies of it, you get the mechanical royalties from the actual product sales. Hmm. Um, if you used a machine to help you make something out of wood, 
well, this isn't, no, that's not a good, so you know, what, you, what percentage yeah. would you uh, put towards like, so if, if I had AI make me a song and I came up with the general idea for it and maybe hummed in the melody, do I get the copyright for that? Yeah, you will see that's where, that's where it's really difficult because yeah. how are you going to, if you claim something, who's going to argue with you? Right. How are they, how are you going to prove it? that you came up with the melody and the AI just came up with the accompaniment. Right. That's, right. that's your claim. I, you know, so that's, it's really complicated and it's going to be the source of a lot of pr legal problems. And luckily AI will help us with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I, I have a, I have clever. a question. I have a question for, for all three of you. Yes. Um, which leads on from what you just, you just mentioned there, Dave, which is, um, how do you copyright a saw, something that you cut wood with? Where's that copyright lie with the person that holds the saw? And I think you're right. I think it will come down to a mechanical element. There is no intellectual copyright that can stop you using a saw or building a saw. There right. is a patent. But there might be a mechanical copyright that will stop you using a type of saw that maybe has been developed by someone. Yeah, yeah pat a, a saw would be patented. Yeah, yeah. Which is again, yeah, more mechanical. Yeah, it's a new. It's new. Like I mean, they're still trying to figure out streaming royalties, and and so we're getting a whole bunch of these disruptive things just coming at us one after another. Well, and then the I mean, you know, you know, you can you can see the writing on the wall that streaming. I mean, I'm going to be able to soon say okay i like you know i like progressive rock and i like funk and please you know give me these you know you know what i like just give me the music as i want it and i get a new new stuff made for me instantly and there is mm. no nobody really there's no recording it's just giving yeah. same with videos and movies and tv and i mean that's a that's a huge shift yeah well that's going to get wiped out the first and that'll be all the industrial stuff you know the like your artwork all the just stuff for background and basic illustrations and stuff that's going to be taken away yep and all of the music for like tv advertisements and background music for movies and stuff gone for musicians you know that's just part of it it's going to happen you know it's going to move it's position. going to move right up the chain though i mean it's going to yeah move to you know okay I, I, yeah and this is you know one of the places we've come to in a lot of conversations which is how come why aren't there more podcasts talking about this because it is a sea change of a planetary uh transformation and that's one of the reasons why it's good to just have these talks right now because if we can talk about it then we can start to consider you know, first and foremost, what is, can we diagnose what's happening? Probably not. I mean, we really can't grab what, you know, what is the shape and size and scale of this train that went out of the stage? I don't know. But we can, we can start to say, okay, you know, it's like the, the room of people who all went in and there was an elephant in there and they all tried to figure out what it was. One person was deaf, another person was blind, or, you know, so forth and so on. And they describe it from different angles. So, you two bringing in your musical perspective and the music industry, there are parallels, but there are also really big differences from the image making industry. But one of the things is, is that those industries, they're, they're gone. They're, you know, we've said this a couple of times or many times um, there. That's one of the big changes is that um, there are going to be industries that will we would say 10, maybe two years from now, they're not going to look the same. Yeah. Yeah, like I always use the, the analogy of a woodworker. You know, 100 years ago, a guy making wooden things, furniture, could make a very handsome living. You know, now it's mainly a hobby. There are still woodworkers making custom pieces for people, but it's not like you can grow up and it's, what do you want to be? I want to be a woodworker. I, I want to be a joiner and make furniture. Now, you know, you might go to work for a company 
these these occupations are going to disappear like what you're saying and uh, but it's like on a really much wider scale than we've ever really experienced before and and what happens when the ai gets even more intelligent you know there's no real limit on where it's going to wind up we don't know how are we going to predict it how are we going to control it from where we sit at the point now where we can kind of rein it in yeah it's yeah, the, we're not was, at general intelligence <laughs> right yeah well you, i've been looking at the like like graphs and things and you know you know human development and innovation is is a very linear uh, but when you plot the ai stuff we're right at the point where it's it's been doing this and yeah. right now about to do this yeah so yeah <laughs> yeah and then how are we going to deal with something if if, if it surpasses our intelligence i mean it's like I, the way, I, way the same way a dog i guess approaches yeah. us <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think, you know, we were talking about this early on, which is the genie's out of the bottle. It's yeah. just now how we deal with it, um, or at least how we navigate what it what's coming next. And I, I remember um there's a uh, I can't remember the the gentleman that did it. It was it was a a, a famous business guy talking about um financial futures. And he said there are only two types of forecasters, those who don't know and those who don't know they don't know. And I think really what it comes down to is that there's a, a huge amount of speculation and some of that speculation will be right. Mm. Um, but I genuinely believe that it will be down to dumb luck as to who ends up being right and who ends up being wrong, because I think this is beyond all of us. You're, right. you're, you're absolutely right. We're talking about something that could potentially outthink us within, with inside a decade. Yeah. Next week. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They just don't know how to plot it right now. I mean, for the, and one of the things Brian and I keep talking about too, is that what we're sharing about right now is easily uh, something that was figured out a year and a half ago. So where they're actually at in the advanced science of this stuff, it's absolutely yeah, UFOs. 100%. I, mean, <laughs> I think it's... that's part of the reason why we'll, we're we're all of a sudden, I'm just thinking of this now, now that you just said that. I think that's part of the reason why it's like, oh, oh, okay, here's something new that just is blowing my mind. Oh, here's something else that new. I think that they're holding back this stuff and then a competitor releases something and they're like, okay, well, then we got to we gotta yeah. release what we've got now to stay competitive. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. Well, we've, I... we've now gone past the top of the hour. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can we do uh, some kind of um, everybody say, think of something really cogent that's going to fix everything and share that in a one to two sentence statement as we close. <laughs> All right. I'm going to point to my dogs. Nice. <laughs> they make everything better. Mm hmm. I, I can, I can give you a quote. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning very, very heavily on quotes here, but there's, um there's an artist called uh, Peter Blagbad, who is a, a cartoonist uh, as well and he he, he had a, a, a but he's also a musician and he used to be in a band called henry cow or at least sort of like a tangential thing um in a band called slap happy and he did an album um uh and uh, and in it he, he talked about the fact that he said when we're born into this world we're born with pockets in our pants and handles on our doors um, we live in the world where everybody, you know, where the, where the footprints are ahead of us. But uh, when it comes to the possession of who we are as individuals and our very souls, we are a solitary pioneer. And I think what that comes down to is that each one of us is going to have to come to our own peace with what's going to happen next. Yeah, very well said. That's true. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I don't know what I would say. The thing that's coming to mind is a book that I read a few years ago by a guy named, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Jaron Lanier or Jaron Lanier. He's a, a crazy musician, computer genius guy. And um, he wrote a book called Who Owns the Future? Which is how how the economy is going to possibly operate when everything is 
internet based and ad based and you know like the commercial the cadbury's commercial uh about what are we going to do when you know all of this stuff is automated and and who owns that and how will the average person survive and it starts out it gets really dry towards the end cuz he's getting really digging into details but it's a really interesting concept about how how we survive as individuals in a, the economy is going to have to change completely mhm mm that's good yeah so maybe check that out it's kind of depressing cuz i don't really want to do that <laughs> but but you know it's going to it's like we have to do stuff we adapt as humans right that's why we have all this stuff that we're questioning now is because we have the ability to create our own evolution to a degree uh change our our own existence with our brains it could be a gigantic evolutionary mistake that will be corrected by earth <laughs> we might you know evolve ourselves out of existence in fact my own opinion is it's probably going to happen but um that's a theory about why we don't see any aliens is yeah they all got to yeah. a little bit further down the line than we are and then that's They're it just vibrating on a different realm um, yeah, or intelligence at some point yeah. reaches self-destruction well that leads to uh, thank you for both of those and actually for me this has been a um a pleasant experience because uh, in spite of the fact that I have talked more towards the end, I've spoken less and I've been able to hear more and I appreciate <laughs> um, what's being said and I appreciate uh, what you've said. Um, I have two things. One of them is the idea, um, both of these are from poets and I forget who said this, but you make the path as you walk it. And that to me, for most artists of whatever tool they use or whatever it, you know it's the ear um or the hand making a painting or whatever that's what you do that's what we do you know it's like we're people who love making puzzles but we're actually making the puzzle as we're putting the puzzle together and to, and to me that that's what this is pointing towards is that kind of freedom which is scary but also really it, it's a potential and we talked about that before the idea between the star trek possibility future and the matrix possibility future uh, and you, there's all sorts of um you know different variables on that the last thing i'll say is a poem a piece of a poem from rumi when in doubt i always reach for rumi um and the poem the two lines just go like this out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing there is a field i'll meet you there when the soul lies down in that grass the world is too full to talk about ideas language even the phrase each each other doesn't make any sense i like it it's a great sentiment it really is yeah Imagine. something to point at or look for yeah you know? is that where we're going i don't know but this this is to me trying to weave that into the this conversation whether we're having it or anybody else is us walking the path and making the path as we walk it because this is a scary time and let's talk about it it's okay uh, yeah if enough people get involved in the discussion then it's possible to create a solution that's acceptable if if no one talks about it and it's left to you know large corporations we know where that's going to go mm -hmm. yeah yep cool well, thank you. All right. Well, we should. Thank you, uh, Simon. Thank you, Dave. If you guys yep. are ever interested in a follow up down the line when things have uh, completely changed again. Yeah, like, by next month. Yeah. <laughs> like tomorrow. <laughs> we can do it again. Yeah. Thank you. Was, I enjoyed it was a genuine pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, David. Yeah. Our pleasure.